Good evening. We bring you the latest in the world of sports and the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Paolo De Rosario. In tonight's game plan, we'll get inside the game of Gila's 3x3 men's basketball team member, Dosha Munzon, as he preps for the upcoming Olympic qualifiers with the national squad. Then we'll take a quick break from basketball to get in touch with Chloe Cortez, who is ready to restart with the F2 Logistics Cargo Movers. And when showtime, Lamelo Ball's return for the Charlotte Hornets, we break down his chances at the 2021 NBA Rookie of the Year race. Joining us for our discussion, as always, is my co-host, Laura Lehman. Lau, we miss basketball so much, and it's great that we got some basketball news to start us off today. That's right. And to begin with, of course, we have news from Gilas, Filipinas. In particular, the 3x3 men's basketball team continues to up the intensity in their training camp. And 26-year-old Joshua Monzon cannot wait for the chance to represent the country once again. Of course, he joins fellow 3x3 pros and veterans CJ Perez, Mo Tautua, and Alvin Pasaol as the country's representatives for the upcoming Olympic qualifiers. Our very own Carlo Pamintuan caught up with the 3x3 veteran in an exclusive update on his training from inside the bubble at the Inspire Sports Academy in Calamba, Laguna. Before he officially debuts as a member of the Terra Firma Jeep in the PBA, the last overall pick of the draft, Joshua Munson, who is also the number one 3x3 player in the country, will get to revisit the half-court game one more time. Ranked number 136 in the world, Joshua Munzon is not just the best 3x3 player in the Philippines, but the best in the Southeast Asian region. Oh yeah, I'm uh, excited to be here, happy to be a part of it and uh, you know, finally get this OQT going. Uh, I mean, it's been a bunch of delays with it, but you know, I'm happy the opportunity is finally here and we get a chance to represent for the country and you know, hopefully qualify for the Olympics. With players like Nauris Mietzis of Latvia and Dusan Bolot of Serbia dominating the rankings, Munzon has gotten a lot of attention from the FIBA 3x3 circuit because of his ability to score and his flashy gameplay. It was definitely a good feeling being out here, uh, you know, just getting our timing back, being on the court, uh, you know, being around the team. Just a good all-around feeling, you know, being around the fellas and being able to build our camar camaraderie moving into the, you know, the OQT. The big challenge for Munzo now is to elevate the rest of his team by sharing all of the knowledge that he has picked up in the past couple of years playing in the 3x3 circuit. Uh, you know, it always takes some time when, when some guys haven't been together, so I think just building that chemistry is always going to take a little time. But at the same time, you know, Mo and CJ are professionals. You know, they're, they're coming in ready to work. And, uh, you know, I think we're all selfless and uh, ready to, you know, accomplish one goal. I think that makes it easy for us, to, uh, us being together and us, you know, wanting the same thing. So, you know, it might be tough at first, but, you know, even it being day two, being here, I feel like we've come a long ways. Munzon isn't new to taking on the best 3x3 players in the world as he has constantly battled them in different tournaments. The big difference is what's at stake. And, you know, I think we're all excited. Like I said, this is the first time for all of us to be on the court in a long time, and I think we're all like kids in the kids in the candy shop right now, being here, being able to you know be be around each other, being around other people, and uh, you know thankfully we were able to come in here and do this. So I just want to thank SBP, Sir Al Penelio, Push Antonio, and just you know for them putting this together for us and you know making this 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 uh, dream a reality. It isn't about prize money or competition points. It's about etching his name into the history books by becoming a Filipino Olympian. From Calamba, Laguna, Carlo Pamentuan for One Sports Plus. Well, speaking of the Calamba bubble, just in case you want to hear more about the daily lives of our national athletes inside the training camp, we thought it would be best to bring in our hard-working insider himself Let's give us a, to give us a live update as we speak. Welcome back to the game, Carlo Pamentuan. To be back. Hi, Pao. Hi, Lau. Hi, Carlo. All right. You know what? This takes me back to last PBA season because yet again, you are our eyes and ears on ground. So I guess to start off, can you give us an idea of what your daily routine is like for you oh. and also the national athletes inside there? 
Well, uh, the, the athletes are training twice a day uh, for both teams, both uh, 5 five one five and 3x3. So most of the time they will train um, one each in the morning and then one each at night. So that's four training sessions that we'll have to attend. And in between that, they have weight training also. So it's just a full day of basketball here in Calamba. And really, I'm lucky to be one of only a select people, a uh, number people who are allowed to actually watch basketball happening uh, here in the country. Well, Carlo, you are a veteran of uh, sports bubbles in the country. I think you may have had the most number of bubbles in Philippine media, sa totoo lang. Most Looking, number of swab tests also, most, most, <laughs> You know, <laughs> I, I have to admit, so I was really jealous that you were holding a ball during your, uh, during your stand-upper. <laughs> and uh, it's something that I, I wish I could do uh, now. But then you, you're around these players all the time now. How are they doing both mentally, both... Uh, physically, how, how are they looking on the court as well? Uh, this guy's looking good. Uh, Carl De Hesa, of course, <laughs> part of the training pool um, alongside uh, Leonard Santillan with some of our 3x3 players. Uh, at first, of course, it was very difficult to get your legs under you because, because they've not been able to play for a long time, as you say hi to CJ Perez out here as well. Um, but, but when they got going, when they start scrimmaging, and then it, it all looked better. Uh, under Coach Ronnie Magsano, of course, the guys here are putting in the work and they want their, their air time right now behind me. So things are looking good. Things are looking good for the 3x3 team. The, uh, the guys are working hard. They're working diligently. They're working smart. And they're really building the camaraderie. Of course, you know that Carl De Hesa and Leonard Santillan and Joshua Munson have a lot of experience playing together. And then CJ Perez and Mo Tautua won the Southeast Asian Games gold medal together. So it's a matter of putting all of that together, building the chemistry between those lines and just meshing as a single unit. That is the big challenge for them. And they may be under time pressure because they were not able to train as quickly as the other teams who are heading to the OQT, but they are making up for it by these two a days. By the way, Carlo, really good job on keeping your cool and composure there. I saw some of the players messing around behind you. Um, but as Joshua Monzon said, they are like kids in a candy shop. So I just can imagine their excitement. Now, how important is this qualifier? I mean, is it an all or nothing opportunity or will there be other chances to make it? Lau, I've seen all of your interviews with the Ateneo players. So I learned that <laughs> from you. I learned the composure from, from your end. Um, this is this is all or nothing. It's either you qualify for the Olympics or you don't. And it's a very tough um, path to get there. Of course, you have to go through the pool. You have to be one of the top two teams from the pool phase. You have to make it to the quarterfinals. You have to be a semifinalist at least. And then actually either make it all the way to the finals or win that battle for third because only three spots will be available for the Tokyo Olympics. And this will be the first time that 3XT will be a medal event in the Olympics actually. So... You know, they're only preparing for, for the Olympic spot. That is what they're gunning for. And the odds might be against them uh, as we have a lot of highly ranked teams competing, especially in our pool, the likes of Slo Slovenia and France. Qatar, also a great team. The Dominican Republic, also a strong team. So they will be up against very tough competition, but they're preparing to go all the way. Uh, do we have an update on Alvin Pasaol? Is he part of the? Is he now training with the team, or will we have an update on when he'll be able to enter the bubble? As I said in my report, um, he is still completing health and safety protocols. Um, I think the estimate is he will be with the team next week. All right. Well, when we talk about the 515 team, I'm sure perhaps you've seen them training in person. I know a lot of people are curious because it's quite a young group. Um, no PBA players involved. So what are your personal impressions on their training so far? They will be training actually at about 7.30. They will be occupying this court after the 3 xc team is done. You're right. Um, there, there are a lot of youngsters there. Um, but there are also a lot of veterans under Coach Tab Baldwin's system. Of course, you talk about the Ateneo boys and, and Matt and Mike Nieto and Isaac Go and the injection of other Ateneo players. So there are a lot of people helping out in terms of learning just the system. But if you ask the coaches, it's all about you know, teaching right now. It's all about um, teaching all of the philosophies that they will need to really master, need to memorize to be able to be competitive in the next stages of the competitions that they will be joining, namely the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers and then the Olympic qualifying tournament. It's a really young team. So the, the coaches need that extra patience in, in answering their questions and making sure that they're understanding everything that there is to understand. But they're, again, they're putting in a lot of work 
they're training twice a day with, with weights in, in between them. So in terms of just their effort, their, their being here actually is already uh, you know, a big sign of their commitment. All right. Thanks so much, Carlo. Looking forward to more of your updates there inside the bubble. Thank you, Pao. Thank you, Lau. Now, when we return, we'll take a quick break from basketball as newly minted cargo mover Chloe Cortez shares her excitement to be part of the F2 Logistics family. Keep it here. You're watching The Game. game. I'm Paolo De Rosario. Surprise, surprise, Chloe Cortez has made the big leap to the F2 Logistics Cargo Movers. The Cargo Movers shared their excitement on social media to welcome their newest member and they added that Cortez's championship experience and intense passion would greatly boost their squad. Well, out of the box now. Tonight, the newest Yellow Ranger of Team F2 joins us. Chloe, welcome back to the game. Hello, Paul. Hi. Good evening. Hi, Chloe. Good evening. You know, the last time we talked to you, nasa ibang team ka pa. So, congratulations on your new team. Unang una, what was your reaction to making this move? Excited ka ba? Or were you a little bit nervous since I know some of these girls were your rivals before? <laughs> Ayan, thank you, thank you. So, uh, wala. Na-excite lang rin talaga ako, syempre. Uh, from before, kaalaban ko sila, tapos ngayon, kasama ko na sila nagtitraining. So, parang kaabang-abang talaga kung ano yung mga next na mangyayari. Well, Chloe, this may be the first time in a very long time na makahiwalay kayo ni Mela. Uh, how does that feel, <laughs> knowing that you're entering a brand new situation? <laughs> Ano, um, di naman yung issue sa amin. And in fact, nung nag-present yung opportunity na yun nga sa F2, uh, isa siya talaga sa mga nag-push sa akin. And siya rin yung isa sa mga nag-ayos since nag-handle rin siya sa virtual playground. And ayun, kahit sa team naman kami, support pa rin namin yung isa't isa. Mas masaya nga lang kung magkasama kami. Pero sa mga ganitong situations, you know, Wala, ganito talaga yung nangyayari. We have to go out of our comfort zones, Ika. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of moving out of your comfort zones, Chloe, your coach this time around is going to be Coach RDJ, Coach Ramil. And usually in UAAP, you would face against him. So is it an awkward situation for you to now be playing as his player? Or are you more excited? Uh, ano ba? Dalawa yung nararamdaman ko eh mm -hmm. for now. Nakaka-excite and nakakaba at the same time. Kasi syempre, when you speak of Coach Ramil, yung credentials niya, talagang yung mga teams na hinahandle niya, champion teams, and yung mga players na minamentor niya, uh, quality players. So, ayun, parang looking forward ako na mag-improve mag under him and ano ba? Yun, maka-adjust ako sa system niya. Yeah. Well, a very loaded team, yung F2, and especially in your position. Uh, how do you feel knowing that you're probably going to have to fight for, uh, fight for playing time against really, really good, know, alongside rather, really, really good teammates? Um, sa akin naman po kasi personally, it's not an issue for me sa playing time ever since nung college pa ako. And I just 
want to contribute lang talaga sa team kung ano yung mabibigay ko. And, ayun. Well, speaking of the other girls also in your same position, um, is there anyone in particular that you're excited to play with that you've never played with before? Uh, <laughs> siguro si, ano, si Ad Abby, si Chang Abby. Siyempre, alam niyo naman siya sa court, very, ano, very, <laughs> nararamdaman niyo yung leadership niya and uh, yung passion niya when she plays. So, ayun, nakaka-excite lang na teammate pa kami. <laughs> Sino nag-welcome sa iyo sa team? Actually, nagulat silang lahat. <laughs> Pero si, si Kim, si Kim yung pinaka-unang naka, ano, nakaalam na doon ako. <laughs> and have you started practicing already, Chloe, kahit Zoom lang? Uh, yes, uh, last week, I started na with, I know, tra- practicing with them via Zoom, mm-hmm. virtual training. Well, of course, uh, being part of a new team, being part of this whole new setup, uh, may, and we all know that F2, kapag sinasay mo F2, ito yung championship contenders, eh, every time they hit the floor, every time we enter a new season. And is there, may dagdag pressure, Ben, knowing that you're going to be part of a championship winning machine? Uh, siyempre, uh, yung pressure siguro for me is to catch up or maka-adjust agad sa system nila knowing na matatagal na rin talaga silang magkakasama from college pa and bago lang ako. So, personally, yun yung ano, parang napapressure ako na maka-agad ano, sa system. Well, alam namin bago ka dito, but there's someone on that team who you've been teammates with before, and that person is Alex Cabano. So, did she give you any advice, maybe on how to adjust or on how to prepare on being a new member of F2? Uh, I don't know. Kasi late na rin niya nalaman, pero nung <laughs> nalaman niya na ano, na nandun na ako, na-excite lang rin siya, and parang sinabihan niya, na, niya ako na ganito nga yung mga usual nilang ginagawa and all. And wala, more on happy lang talaga na magkasama kami uli sa isang team. You know, a lot of F2 fans were excited knowing that Chloe Cortez is now joining their team. And uh, to all the fans out there ng F2, what can they expect from Chloe Cortez wearing yellow? <laughs> Ayan, ano ba yan? <laughs> Ayaw kasing ilimit yung sarili ko sa expectations. So mm-hmm. let's just see na lang, abangan na lang natin kung anong... Mangyayari. And yes, ayun. Keep on supporting. <laughs> All right. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat, Chloe. Best of luck to your new team and your new journey here in F2. Thank you for joining us on our show. Thank you for... Ay, pwede pong bumati. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Jeffrey, of course. Go <laughs> lang. <laughs> oh, ayun po. Uh, Una-una, I want to thank you. The... I think and then. I want to thank the F2 management, yeah, si Le Miss Holly, si Sir Efren, the coaching staff, and my teammates for trusting me and giving me an opportunity to play for a you know, strong contender team nga and for welcoming me sa team. And also, I want to greet yung mga boss ko sa virtual playground, si Sir Don, Sir Cha, Boss Mark, Jorik Mela. Thank you so much sa pag-support, sa pag-guide na binibigay niya. Yun lang. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job, Chloe. Thank you din. Maraming salamat. Now, after the break, let's talk some hoops with Showtime Lamella Ball's return for the Charlotte Hornets. We break down his chances at the 2021 NBA Rookie of the Year race. Stay tuned. You're watching The Game.
welcome back to the game. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. Let's head to Minnesota for the showdown between last year's Rookie of the Year, John Morant, and one of the prime candidates for this year's award, Anthony Edwards. There's Anthony Edwards for the Timberwolves, and of course, John Morant for the Grizzlies. And of course, when we talk about Morant, we begin with this baseline jam from Ja. Ja Morant cocking it back, avoiding the block, and getting the slam. Then we move on to a crazy sequence here. The Wolves get the steal. D'Lo gives it up to Edwards. Seals that with a slam, but we're not done yet. A steal and a bonus layup for Edwards just right after. Of course, Anthony Edwards had himself a game. 42 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 assists in this one. Showing range here. Showing everyone he can drain the triple. But Ja Morant. Not pulling away basket and one. Ja Morant getting it done. Here's one of Ja's 10 assists in the game. Easy slam there as Memphis start to take control. But Anthony Edwards still fighting back with another triple. But Ja Morant was just too much. 37 points in the ball game. And ja and the Grizzlies take on Detroit tomorrow morning. Manila time enjoying that victory over the Timberwolves. Don't miss the action tomorrow on NBA Philippines. KD, Kyrie, and the Nets take on Luka and the Mavs. And of course, Ray Young and the Hawks take on DeMontis Sabonis and the Indiana Pacers. And on One Sports, it's the LA showdown between AD and the Lakers versus Kawhi and the Clippers. Now, speaking of rookies, keeping things interesting is the returning star of the Charlotte Hornets, LaMelo Ball. Melo is three games in for the Hornets after recovering from a broken wrist since March. Now he is back, averaging 16.7 rebounds and 6 assists per game. But with the amount of time that he missed, what are his chances of still winning the Rookie of the Year award? Now here to help us with our discussion are NBA.com Philippines writer Yo Sarmenta and our correspondent Carlo Pamintu and gentlemen. Welcome back to the show. Hi, thanks for having me again, Mel. No. Hi guys. All right, let's start with Lamelo. First of all, I don't know if we should be calling him Melo or if that's still reserved for Camelo Anthony, uh. but that's another <laughs> discussion altogether. Um, for you, Yo, how impressive has Lamelo been since his return? Do you think his, he's fully recovered from his injury? Well, now to answer that question, on, a, on the very first play he got back since his wrist, wrist injury, he threw an underhand full court pass like he was just scooping ice cream. It was that easy for him. <laughs> and I guess to answer your question, yes, he's definitely back. And I'm sure you know, everyone's happy about that. Well, Carlo, looking at what Lamelo's doing, a lot of people are saying that he will be the Rookie of the Year based on what he's done early on in the season. But when you talk about injuries that may have stopped that train, do you think that he's still the favorite despite the missed time? Uh, Paolo, what's clear to me is that this is a two-player race. It mm -hmm. will either be Lamelo Ball of Charlotte or Anthony Edwards of Minnesota. You can make a case for both. Um, the, the odds are saying that Lamelo will be favored because he's getting all the press. He's getting all the attention because, again, he's a flashy player. He's enjoyable to watch. He, he makes exciting passes. And, you know, he's, he's just overall it, better TV compared maybe to Anthony Edwards. But you really cannot count Anthony Edwards out of the situation, of the conversation. He just dropped, what, 40, 42 points in his last game. If Lamelo's averaging 16, 6, and 6, Anthony Edwards is out there getting 18, 5, and 3. So the numbers aren't that bad, aren't that heavily in the favor of Lamelo. So Edwards, I think, can give him a run for his money. But in terms of voting, I think Lamelo will get a lot of those coming from the press because everyone's just so hyped up on Lamelo right now. All right, Carlo. Well, you already mentioned Anthony Edwards. Now, how big of a factor do you think it's going to be that the Timberwolves have the third worst record in the league? I mean, does that make a difference when you're talking about Rookie of the Year? Uh, I think it does because it, it's never a good thing when you say that. He's getting numbers. He's getting empty calories because he's doing it for a really bad team. But you also have to consider that he's out the West and, and Lamelo is out East. So, in essence there's a really high of possibility that Lamelo's team will fare better than Anthony Edwards. But I think you should also have to factor in that he has played all of the 66 games of his team. And Lamelo missed a bunch because of his injury. 
So again, I think it kind of levels up the conversation between the two. Yo, in an article that you wrote uh, talking about the rookie watch, you also had to mention Tyrese Halliburton and sabing ni Carlo that it is a two-person race basically. But in your mind, where does Tyrese Halliburton fall? You know, Paolo, Carlo, I just had to put Tyrese there, show some love for that Sacramento Kings rookie. You know, Anthony Edwards and Lamella Ball all got the hype and rightfully deserve so. But Tyrese Halliburton is just smooth. He's silky. He's, he's like a little showman. But again, not a lot of fans, I guess, watch Sacramento basketball because they're not really good at West. <laughs> but if you really take a closer look at his game, he deserves a little bit of love. So... He's a close third, I would say, after Lamella Ball and Anthony Edwards. Well, you, you, you know, I, I noticed that you mentioned he's smooth and silky, but I do know he also has an awkward-looking shot. So I'm not sure how smooth that would be, but what would impress you most about this game in particular? Is it his ball handling or his shooting? What is it? I guess when I say smooth and silky, I guess it's his overall approach. It's like... I would. I'm thinking right now. It's like if Bruno Mars played basketball. It's, it's, that's so, the game is so easy for him. the game is so easy for him. And yes, his shot is has a, sprung a lot of debate with his awkwardness. But you know what? He he he's getting to know what to do on the court. Really, game time decisions, especially as playing the point guard for the Kings. Carlo, we talked about the the fact that losing records. Uh, ng si Halliburton and si uh, Anthony Edwards. Do you feel that it had they been in winning situations but still putting up the numbers that they've had, it would have been a closer race against Lamelo Ball? Uh, let me just put this out of the way, you know, since since you mentioned it anyway. I think the only way that Tyrese Halliburton can have a shot at winning Rookie of the Year is if Anthony Edwards and Lamelo Ball left the door open. I, I just have to I just have to say it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I think that the conversation will not be that close either way. Um, mm. I, I don't think the numbers that he is pulling or any rookie for that matter is pulling um, could really help them out in the conversation for rookie of the year because Anthony Edwards and Lamelo have been head and shoulders above everyone at this point. Ant Man did not start rather um, well, but the, the numbers that he is pulling, especially in the last three games, have been outstanding. And LaMelo Ball has been, you know, re resurgent upon his return to, to the lineup for the Charlotte Hornets. So if you're asking if, if the record would have helped any other rookie, I really don't think so. Again, I think it's a two-person race right now. Okay, so this is a question for both of you, Yo and Carlo. If you had a rookie card of both LaMelo <laughs> and uh, Anthony Edwards. After 10 years, let's say, let's say 10 years, who do, you think, who do you think's rookie card will have more value? Yo, ikaw muna. Well, first of all, I think Carlo has two Lamella Ball cards. <laughs> from, I've seen Instagram videos of him just ecstatic over Lamella Ball uh, cards. But I would say, I would, I would be elated too if I had a Lamella Ball card right now. Even if it doesn't win Rookie of the Year, like he's a, he's a perfect ambassador for the NFT movement, NBA Top Shop movement, the return of basketball cards, I have to go with Lamella Ball. Carlo, how about you? Imagine how many voters for the Rookie of the Year race would have Lamello Ball cards right now and how that would affect their judgment. So <laughs> I, I, I would think it would be Lamello Ball. Who will be having the, the bigger value 10 years from now? All right, guys, well, we'll definitely have to watch this show again in 10 years and see if your <laughs> predictions were accurate. But thank you so much, Yo and Carlo, for joining us. Thank you, guys. And as for you all, thank you for watching. I'm Laura Lima. Guys, on weeknights here on One News, One Sports, and One Sports Plus, I'm Paolo Del Rosario, and this has been The Game.